Hi, this is Mike Moo from HIPAA Watchdog, where we are your virtual HIPAA compliance officer. This is a good security message for everybody. Sometimes I feel like people just uh, miss this very important thing. So the number one reason for recent security breaches is due to what? Unpatched software, software that has not been updated. And we're talking about uh, Windows updates. We're talking about antivirus updates. We're talking about system software patches, vulnerability patches and everything. You know, the hackers work around the clock and they really just look for these vulnerabilities to attack. You don't want to make it easy for them. So when I go on site and I do some inspections, a lot of times I have to point this out and I guess people just kind of ignore this. So look at this picture on your screen right here. This would typically be found on the bottom right hand side of your Windows computer. Sometimes it might be hidden, oftentimes it's not, it's just ignored and it would just say check your computer security or, uh, or some other um, notice right uh, if you have an antivirus that works with windows it'll often give you an alert whether or not it found something that might be a threat um, that is being quarantined or analyzed by antivirus so there's a lot of important things that happen down here on the bottom right hand corner of most computers you see a bunch of these icons the ones you really want to look out for are the ones that are flashing red or have a red and a shield on uh, granted there are some fake ones and regardless if it's a fake or a real one it doesn't matter. It means that there could be something going on and there could be trouble. So pay attention to those. If you don't know anything about this section down here, I would highly recommend if you see something like this, go ahead and talk to your IT and, and ask them to come and check this out and see what needs to be done. So if you just Google Windows Security Alert, you'll see a bunch of these pictures here about what some of these things will look like. Now, for Windows system, if you're, everything seems to be okay in terms of security essentials, which is the baseline of security, this is kind of what it will look like if you look at the Windows Security Center. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, um, I'm going to show you how you update your Windows PC. So I'm doing this on a Windows 10 machine. And keep in mind, if you want a corporate network or network that has you know servers, it's, it's, it's domain controlled. Typically, IT has locked down the computer systems and they're the ones that do it. So you'll probably want to check with them to see whether or not um, your computers are up to date, whether or not it's updated. Uh, if you have an alert, such as what we just saw down below with the shield sign and it's red, uh, oftentimes, or if it's a shield sign and it's an exclamation point, that means that you have important security updates that are highly recommended to be installed. All right, now to update it in Windows 10, um, I love Windows shortcuts. Microsoft has a bunch of them, very important ones that you should probably want to know. One of them for HIPAA security is the Windows and the L key, which locks it. But we're going to do the Windows and the I key. So you look for the Windows key on your keyboard, hold that down, and then press number one of those letters. So if, L, if you press L right now, then that would actually lock out your computer, which is good, right? You want to make sure your computers are locked out when you're not in front of it, particularly if it has access to PHI. Uh, but we're going to hit the Windows I. Now, when you hit the Windows I, it goes over to something called settings. So for Windows 10, how you, may, how you could do the updates are you could do go to settings and choose update and security. You click that open right there and it'll pop up the Windows update section. Now, since my device is up to date, that's great. Uh, typically, if this hasn't been run or hasn't been able to set up and installed automatically, what it'll do is it'll just start checking for updates. It'll kind of look like this and you just got to have to wait a little bit. Then it'll let you know what kind of updates uh, that might pop up and that you may or may not want to install. It's typically recommended if you're a small practice to go ahead and install most of these updates. Now, granted, we want to make sure you have a backup of all your important data and maybe your computer systems. Make sure that's all done beforehand. If you have a good IT person, chances are they do that for you, but you want to trust and verify. Ask them whether or not all your stuff is backed up. And they'll probably want to ask you why, because it's you typically when someone asks that type of question, it means something happened or something's about to happen. So if you have IT, you know, have them go ahead and configure things to make sure that things are updated automatically. But this is how you do it. You check for updates. And if there is an update, it will ask you what it is that you want to install. You can go ahead and choose them. There are some other advanced options here. You can do automatic or notify to schedule restart. Now, 
If you are a private practice, it's really busy. I would recommend that you set it to notify to schedule restart because sometimes if you're in the middle of something and you walk away for a bit and you didn't save your work, it will automatically try to restart your computer system uh, regardless of what the software thinks or it doesn't know what you're doing really unless you're using a Microsoft product. Okay, so this is great because it, it updates uh, your Microsoft Office Suite Right, any other Microsoft type products that support it. So if you have recent Microsoft product, uh, such as Microsoft Office or any part of Microsoft project, for instance, it'll all give you information about the updates and then you can choose what to install. I don't recommend getting insider preview builds, but if you do this, uh, typically you should be okay. If you're a really small practice, it's up to you to decide whether or not you wanna have it done automatically or just make it part of your regular schedule process for um, you know, a slow day of the week if you have one or just have IT figure out a good time to do it if they need to test these updates. Obviously, none of this applies if you're at a larger organization where you have an IT department that keeps on top of these things. Unfortunately, in a lot of places, I find that uh, the smaller offices don't have a full-time IT staff on site and they really don't get the benefit of that. So, um, so that's why I say keep Keep track of those alerts down on the bottom. Notify IT immediately if there's any shield with the exclamation point on there. Um, those are important notices that you definitely do not want to ignore. Okay, so that's how you do that Windows update there again. Um, or you can just go to hold the, press the Windows button and then go to settings and then choose update. Update and security information is all right here. Okay, so that's how you update the Windows, but um, there are a lot of vulnerabilities that happen due to other software they installed, such as Adobe Acrobat Reader, you know, uh, Adobe, a lot of Adobe stuff, right? Adobe Flash, Adobe Shockwave, things like that were, were a lot of the problems um, that people had to deal with back in early 2000s because uh, people would find these vulnerabilities, send you a PDF, and a PDF would basically open a bunch of macros and invite stuff to download. Now, thankfully, Microsoft has actually disabled most macros by default in, in Word when you're doing a default installation. But again, if you have an IT department, they take care of that. If you don't, those are things you want to watch out for. But uh, in terms of patching other software, this is a tool that I like to use, and I recommend that you purchase a license for it. I believe it's just a dollar a PC a year, and this gives you access to some great tools on update, uploading, uh, I'm sorry, updating uh, frequently used software. Okay. So I already downloaded it and this is what it looks like. All right. So, uh, it, it runs obviously in windows 10, just fine. And it basically keeps definitions of all the softwares. It will scan all the software that you have on here, show up in red for the things that are out of date and that you probably want to update. All right. So it told me my Adobe flash plugin, uh, Java eight, Update 77, see how many updates there are. Java is obviously one of the ways that hackers and attackers and malware try to get in is through Java. Okay, that's one of those, those important ways. Right, your browser is very important to keep up to date as well. So my Google Chrome is due for an update. And I have some other utilities on here, but you can choose your Adobe stuff. So the ones that are in green means that it's up to date. I guarantee you that you're going to do, when you run a scan, uh, basically, you tr you click you start it up and you click check software or recheck software. It will check all the apps in its database and let you know what needs to be up to date. And I definitely recommend you update most of these up here. These plugins are very important to update. The browsers are also important to update as well, uh, except an exception where something requires Internet Explorer particular version, and you definitely don't want to update some of that if you have some old legacy software. If you have old, if you're running old legacy software, definitely run a full-on security risk analysis to see if that is safe to run, because a lot of things can come in in old, unpatched software. Speaking of which, as it's 2016 right now, believe it or not, a lot of people are still running Windows XP machines. If you're in healthcare and you're using that for PHI, stop using it, because you're not getting any of these patches anymore. 
Okay, so after that's done, you just click on perform five updates or perform the, the updates that it has. You can check the ones that you want, uncheck the ones that you don't want and have those updated. Again, this is information for private practices, right? Who don't have a full on IT staff or have IT staff and you want to sit down with your IT staff uh, that you hired in contract to see if this is okay to run. Make this part of the process. Um, let them know that you are concerned about software that is out of date. Okay, so this is one way to check for it and update it all in one. Uh, the old way to do it is to download these from all the individual sites. Go to Adobe, find out what needs to be updated, or open up Adobe Acrobat, and then choose Help and Check for Updates. That could take a long time to do. All right, it's easier to do it from here. Okay, uh, I just opened up Distiller by mistake. That's not what I want to run. But anyways, you get the idea. That's the best and easiest way to do the updates. All right, to recap, you definitely want to install any important, urgent, critical updates that Microsoft identifies. And you can again access that through the Windows key and pressing the I. Go to Up Windows Update and Security. If you see any security alerts that show up show up like this in red okay it's something that you want to stop and contact it about there's some fake websites that send these out and you don't want to click on it for sure and you don't want to okay anything unless you understand it and can spot it so you will want it to check that out for you but it's always a concern because when you see something like this it means there's usually a computer security issue that is not going right so one of those things about some of these malware, some of these advanced ransomwares, is actually it goes in and it disables your antivirus if you allow it to by tricking you into clicking yes and to allow. And you don't want to do that. Sometimes it doesn't get it all and it gives you this message here or it disables it. That's why these are some things that you want to be alert for. Um, the exclamation point and the recommended, that type of thing, should also be notified as well, but make sure you read very carefully what it's saying, but also contact IT. Okay. All right. So that's how you update the PC. Hopefully defend again against these attacks through unpatched software. Uh, I recommend again, check out patchmypc.net. I don't have any affiliation with them whatsoever. I just use them on a personal basis on my own computer. They allow you to do uh, third party patch management, and integrate with some other things. It's it's very useful. A lot of corporations use it. It's cheap. Okay. Uh, for for larger organizations, right? 500 PCs, just $500. Uh, and you compare that with a competition, right? 15,000. Or if you're lucky, um, you, you know, you, you have Lumen, Lumension patch manager or SolarWinds patch manager, but look at the price differences of all these right there. So if you're an individual home user, feel free to use this up to date for free. If you're a corporate, uh, organization that doesn't qualify for the free one, definitely look into it. It's just $500 for all your computers. All right. Thanks for watching. And I will catch you in the next video. Hopefully this was helpful to you. And hopefully uh, next time, if I go out and visit your site, if you watch this video already, you already know if I see that exclamation point, I know you didn't watch the video. I know you didn't take action on it. And you really need to. You really, really, really need to. Um, it's so important. It will help reduce all these data breaches. And we don't want that in healthcare. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.